Okay, going to give the history of this menorah symbol of Talmudic Judaism. You see, like I said in the video, Talmudic Judaism is a bunch of witchcraft. It's a bunch of uh, pagan idolatry repackaged. Because why? Talmudic Judaism is Babylonian mystical religion repackaged. I'm going to show this article about ancient usage of the menorah symbol, pre-Judaic usage of the menorah symbol. Because Talmudic Judaism, all it is, is just a bunch of repackaged paganism. Just like how Roman Catholicism is repackaged Greek Roman religion uh, with the bit of New Testament sprinkled in on top of it. Talmudic Judaism is Babylonian mystical idolatry with a bit of Old Testament truth sprinkled on top of it. And uh, this may make a lot of people upset by saying this, but the menorah is a pagan occult symbol and it is a satanic idol. Okay, If you don't like that, if someone's, if someone's offended by, by me saying it, if you're like a hardcore kind of Zionist, whatever, I support the nation of Israel, okay? I support the Jewish people. But if you're a hardcore hyper-Zionist who believes the Jews don't need Jesus Christ to be saved and you're offended by this, you don't have a problem with me. You got a problem with God's word. I'm going to show this article about pagan usage of this menorah symbol. So let's read the article. This is uh, about, I'll link it in the description. It's about uh, ancient and new menorahs, part one, the oldest items. I'll link it, again, I'll be linking this in the description. So down to uh, this part of the article, down uh, this section right here, ancient menorahs BC. Uh, 4000 BC, Mesopotamia. Archaeolog archaeologists have unearthed vessels portraying the Tree of Life modus during evacuation work, during excavation works in the Domsi Mound in Turkey. Archaeologists have seen figures of pine trees and, and some vases and potteries that is very interesting and important since, quote, it is not an ordinary tree. It is an example or is it related to the faith system of and burial tradition. The oldest known example of this tree culture or belief system is in uh, Domzum T. There is your Christmas tree right there, by the way. The Christmas tree is from Babylon. That's where Mesopotamia is, is in Babylon. Sorry, I mean Babylon's in Mesopotamia. So yeah, as, as I like to say, Merry Christmas from Babylon. Merry Christmas from ancient, the Merry Christmas from the spirit of Babylon. Because that's what Christmas is. It's of the spirit of Babylon. And if you don't like that, you got a problem with God. You got to get right with the God, not with me. Because I'm just simply stating what the word of God says. You don't have a problem with me. You got a problem with God's word. Uh, before 3000 BC, the tree of life in a Mesopotamian stone base, redrawn from figure 67 of Roger Crook, quote, the tree of life image for the cosmos, uh, Thames and Hudson, New York, 1974, page 119. This illustration is similar to the construction of the menorah. Then to give the sources right there. So yeah, look at the similar construction right there. Let me just full screen that. Look at that. Similar to the menorah. Why? Because they're borrowing it from pagan religions. Okay. Like I said, Talmudic Judaism is repackaged Babylonian mystical religion. Okay. If you don't like that, because it, again, it's a bunch of devils that are behind it. Okay. I'm just going to be blunt and brutal. Talmudic Judaism is a bunch of devils. Okay. It's a bunch of devils behind this. Because the devils are behind false religions. And Talmudic Judaism is a false religion. And if you don't like that, you've got a problem with God, not with me. What did I just hit? That? Sorry, I bumped my desk for a second. But yeah, you got a problem with God, not with me. If you got a problem with that, because Talmudic Judaism is from the pit of hell, and it is an antichrist false cult. Okay, and if someone doesn't like that, someone someone hearing the sound of my voice doesn't like that. I don't know what to say because I'm showing all the evidence. I've shown it in past videos that Talmudic Judaism is a pagan cult. Uh, 2000 to 850, 1850 BC, a figure stands before a sacred tree, uh-oh, the Christmas tree, in a scene uh, reverence. In Babylonian mythology, the tree of life was a magical tree that grew in the center of paradise. The absolute or primordial waters flowed from its roots. It is a prototype of the tree described in Genesis, an ancient symbol in which the Egyptian, Islamic, and Kabbalistic tree of life concepts originated. The tree of life can also represent a spine and branches of the human nervous system. Yeah, it's a bunch of cults. Occultism. That's what Talmudic Judaism is, a bunch of occultism. That's where they're getting this tree of life symbol from. Okay, the, get, where, where in the Bible are we supposed to symbolize the tree of life? I don't think you want to be symbolizing that tree. Okay, just to keep that in mind. We're not, we're, we shouldn't really be symbolizing that thing. But again, Talmudic Judaism is a bunch of witchcraft. The Talmud is a bunch of witchcraft. The Kabbalah is a bunch of witchcraft. And if you don't like that, get right with God because you got a problem with God, not with me. Okay, make sure I'm full screen. Before 4, 1400 BC, Dr. Kim discovered this ancient menorah, golden lampstand, rock inscription in rock inscription at in Saudi Arabia, which is about 120 to 300 kilometers off of, from Mount Sinai. It is likely the oldest rock inscription of a menorah in the world, having been inscribed by the Israelites as they wandered in the wilderness in Midian. 
Yeah, the, why? Because they were influenced by Egyptian paganism. That's why they drew that symbol. They're not doing it because God told them to. God never told them to make a symbol like that. Please show me a chapter and verse where there's a symbol. And if God told them to make the symbol, why are the pre Talmudic Jewish pagans making that symbol too, the, the, of that surrounding Middle Eastern region. Why are they making that symbol too? Why? Because it's a satanic symbol that it just simply repackaged by Talmudic Jewish witchcraft. That's too real for you? Well, then get right with God, because you got a problem with him and his standards about not learning the way of the heathen, and the menorah is the way of the heathen. Uh, 1,200, 600 BC, the Assyrian Tree of Life. This Assyrian relief is from the throne throne room of the Northwest Palace of Ashurapal Arsh, II, reign 883 to uh, 859 BC. Hope I'm saying that name right. In Nimrod in northern Iraq. Huh, Nimrod. That's where the religion of Judaism comes from. Okay, that's the origin of Judaism. It comes from Nimrod. It comes from Babylon. As I'm showing in this video, and as I've shown in previous other videos, you say, "Why are you so fired up?" Because this is a false cult damning Jews to hell. That's why. So yeah, I'm going to be fired up about it. Uh, the king appears twice, as uh, shown from two sides, dressed in richer robes and holding a mace, symbolizing his authority. The figure of the king on the right makes a gesture of worship to a god, in a winged disc on the top center of the relief. He is blessed by the protective spirits. Yep, Merry Christmas from Babylon. Like I said before, that's where your Christmas tree comes from. Nimrod. Okay, I'm just going to name his name, Brian Dunlinger. He's justifying this pagan idol, and he needs to repent of that. He's wrong for doing so, and he's leading his followers astray. Do I think the guy's lost? I don't know. I mean, he's given, you know, he's not, he's definitely not behaving like a God, God fearing man. That's one thing, because he won't take any correction. He's prideful and arrogant, and he refuses to let go of his idols, his traditions of men, his Roman Catholic traditions of men. That's what Christmas is it's a Roman Catholic heathen holiday. And Brian Dillinger doesn't want, does not want to give up his pagan traditions of men, his pagan Catholic traditions of men, while professing to be against Roman Catholicism. He's lying. He doesn't want to give up his Catholic traditions. Okay. Uh, continuing. Make sure I'm full screen. That was my rant there. That was free, by the way. Uh, 911 to 605 BC, Assyrian Tree of Life, cylinder sealed with a solar disc of Asher, anointing the two eagle-headed gods before the Tree of Life. This sacred tree was an extremely important symbol in the palace of Ashur Asher Pal. I hope, am I saying that name right? Really, I mean, I, I, I can't pronounce some of these names. Just bear with me. Uh, appearing on reliefs virtually in virtually every room of the palace. It was also used in textile patterns of stamp and cylinder seals and ivory carvings. It is represented both the king and Asher and the chief god of Assyria. It is also a symbol of fertility in the land, which is exactly what the pagan menorah symbols, fertility. You know, again, wh where, where in scripture are we supposed to be picturing the tree of life? It's not in there, okay? You don't want to be picturing the tree of life, okay? We just keep, should keep that in mind, first of all. But why are all these pagan Middle Easterners picturing this symbol if it's some kind of God-fearing symbol because it's not it's from the devil it's from the pit of hell and same thing with Talmudic Judaism the religion of Judaism is from the pit of hell 865 BC to 860 BC Neo-Assyrian era a pair of Alpalekiu Alpale with sacred tree of life these reliefs demonstrate the human-headed and bird-headed Apakalu am I saying that right uh, which means sage and Alcadian uh, the Apokalu is a protective spirit which protected the king. In several contexts, the Apokalu, Ap I hope I'm saying that right, uh, are seven demigods which are sometimes described as part man, part eagle, or fish. Wall reefs, oh, look at that, wall reefs. You know, kind of like on Christmas, you put those reefs on your door. Yeah, you know, Satan's real old. He knows how to repackage things. But then you got Brian Dillinger again defending this stuff. He's in sin for doing so. And if he doesn't like me, if his followers... His little cultic followers don't like me calling him out. You, you're just a respecter of persons. That's all you are. I'm going to name his name Phil Randon. He's the follower of Brian Dillinger. He doesn't like it when you call it his cult leader. He'll call you lost. Hey, if you're watching this, hey, I'm calling out Brian Dillinger. If you don't like that, you, you, it shows you're a respecter of persons. And anyone else who doesn't like me calling out Brian Dillinger, it just shows you're a respecter of persons and you need to repent of that. Because you don't like it when someone kicks your idol. You know? I mean, seriously, are you mad someone's kicking your god? Someone's kicking your idol? Well, then get right with God because you're upset that somebody's kicking your idol, Brian Dillinger. Uh, yeah, so part so that the reefs, so that's where the pagan Christmas thing comes from. Northwest Palace, uh, Palace of Nimrod. Yeah, they already read that. That's in Mesopotamia, Iraq, seventh century BC. The wall reef from Babylon. Uh oh, Babylon. The wall reef from Babylon. Relief, sorry. 
my bad. Uh, protective spirit and tree of life. The Babylonian tree of life uh, had a different form to, uh, from that mentioned in the Bible. He also ha he also has no direct connection to the form of the menorah, but he is considered a role model for later Christmas trees in many countries. You hear that, Brian Dillinger? Babylon, you know, the Babylonian tree of life was considered a model for Christmas trees. Merry Christmas from Babylon, Brian Dillinger. You're defending Babylonian traditions. And you're misusing the Bible to say, oh, it's liberty, it's liberty. You don't have liberty to celebrate a pagan holiday. Hate to break your news to you. you. Don't try to twist Romans chapter 14, verse 5, rip it out of context, and try to use that to justify your, your heathen ways. Try to justify your heathen traditions. Sorry, you can't do that. Okay? You're observing Babylonian customs. Which are Roman Catholic too, by the way, but... Of course, Brian Dillinger. You see, when you hold Brian Dillinger to his same standards, he'll he'll accuse everyone who doesn't agree with him of being a Roman Catholic or a Jesuit. His followers accuse him of being Jesuits. But whenever you hold him to the same standard, saying, hey, why are you celebrating the Roman Catholic holiday of Christmas? He'll just get mad and prideful and won't take any correction. Again, if you don't like me calling Brian Dillinger out, if you're one of his followers, you're just a respecter of persons. Because I'm, kick because I'm kicking your idol, you're offended. Uh, second century to first century BC Judaic stone architectural frieze with menorah, a carved rectangular archaeological panel with the face of a running tetramagandian. Again, not good at reading on a computer. Uh, motifs and uh, rosettes to the center of menorah with the ring and pellet above. The menorah in the middle of the stone has the shape of a tree of life, and they give the picture right there. Let me show the picture. So there is it right there. Uh, second to first century BC, an ancient synagogue. So now we're now we're getting to the Jewish uh, side of this whole thing. Now you got here. Look at this. Here's here's a, Brian, again Brian Dillinger. Here's a Christmas tree right there for you. Merry Christmas from ancient Egypt, from ancient Babylon. Uh, first century relief uh, carvings in uh, Persepolis. Hope I'm saying that word right. Again, not good at pronouncing these foreign names either. In Iran, the ceremonial capital of the Achaemenid Empire, depicting Mithra, an evergreen tree, an evergreen tree, in the first few centuries. Christians, Christians, look at this. Christians did not feast on Christmas and did not have a Christmas tree, as all this came from paganism. The symbolism of evergreens has much earlier origins and can be traced to the worship of the sun god Mithras around 600 BC, as Mithras was often pictured as an evergreen tree or next to one. Yep. You know, so Brian Dillinger defending Christmas, uh, you might as well go start worshiping Mithra because he's defending Mithra, Babylonian ancient Mithra worship. Again, you're defending Babylonian traditions, Brian. You're defending pagan Catholic traditions and you're misleading your followers because you're leading them astray by getting, to, getting them to observe this, this heathen occult holiday of Christmas, as the Catholics call it. And, and he's too prideful to take any correction. Whenever someone tries to correct him on Christmas, he just won't hear it. Because he's being blinded by his pride. Why? Because Proverbs 15 says that correction is grievous to them. You know, you know, if you don't, basically, uh, I'll, I'll basically on my website, I have an article about Brian Dillinger. Again, I'll be off topic, but I have an article about Brian Dillinger. I'll link it in the description also. Uh, basically, he doesn't take correction because it, he's prideful. His pridefulness is blinding him from taking correction. And these pagan Christmas trees are Babylonian idols. And Brian Dillinger is leading his followers to celebrate Babylonian traditions. And he's too, too arrogant and puffed up to take any correction. First century BC, Tree of Life. Oh yeah, pretty, you, you guys get the picture pretty much. All these ancient religions are depicting this menorah symbol. I mean, all these different examples right here. It's it, it just blatantly obvious that the menorah is a heathen occult symbol. So, wanted to show that. The menorah is not a God-fearing symbol. It's not a godly, righteous symbol. It is of the devil. It's from the pit of hell. That's all that it is. And Judaism is, is from the pit of hell. Judaism is an antichrist false religion condemned in first john chapter 2 verse 22 to 23 as antichrist because they deny because judaism as a religion denies that jesus christ is the son of god and is the messiah so thus they are antichrist so don't be deceived may the grace of our lord jesus christ be with all the brethren goodbye Thank you.